What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about the hard way. And I'm very happy to be joined for the very first time here on the channel by John from They Said We Said. Uh, he's got a great channel talking about tons of different films. Uh, he hosts a show called The Cult of Films and ultimately is a really cool guy, really laid back and I really enjoy hearing his takes on movies. So it was about time that we come together to talk about a movie. A 1991 film that I actually am going to be covering as well with uh, Mike from Did You See That over on his channel. But as I usually do, I like to do a more extensive version of those collab reviews over here. Uh, so a big thanks to Mike from Did You Zeta for putting me on to this movie and actually being the reason that this collab is even happening. And a big thanks to John for joining me for this collab. Now, I want to break down the general premise of this film really quickly. And then I'm actually going to do something a little bit different and pass it off to my guest earlier in this review. And then I'll come in for the later part of the review. So this film stars Michael J. Fox, James Wood, and Stephen Lang and tells the story of a person playing by Michael J. Fox who is a huge Hollywood action star, a huge just star in general and he's looking to go into more serious roles and he wants to play a really down in his luck, you know, just down and dirty cop from New York, somebody who's just kind of been through it all, somebody with a dark past, somebody who just, you know, is just that troubled soul but that really cool cop. And that's when on TV he ends up seeing this cop played by James Woods who's called John Moss and he's like that's the guy. And in the middle of all this John Moss is currently looking for this serial killer called the Party Crasher played by Stephen Lang who gives a really big over the top very almost comic booky performance and I really thoroughly enjoyed that. And so Nick Lang this actor decides to request to kind of have a ride along and to spend some time with this New York cop so that he can learn more about being a cop for his role. Except this cop Cop is not really thrilled about that idea. He looks at Nick Lang as an annoying just prick who's just kind of coming around trying to copy what he does and ultimately is getting in the way of his investigation. Over the course of the movie, there's that very, you know, similar buddy cop feel and vibe that you come to expect from a lot of movies like this. And uh, ultimately, it kind of leads to them, you know, slowly bonding over the course of the film while also butting heads plenty of time. This film was directed by John Badham, who's directed films like one of the Dracula films, Short Circuit and Saturday Night Fever along with many others and uh, yeah overall I I'll say right now I actually really enjoyed this film I found it to be a good time a film I had never seen before and I'm a big fan of the buddy cop genre this is a movie that I feel kind of went under the radar I think for most people if you're a fan of the buddy cop genre and uh, yeah it was cool to check out something that I had never seen before but without a doubt what I could say the best part of this movie is is Michael J Fox and him leaning into the very over-the-top elements that make Michael J Fox especially in this time who he was so I have more to say on this this movie but like I said I'm gonna kind of do something a little different this time around and have uh, my guest John go ahead and give his thoughts now and then we'll jump into my thoughts so take it away John why thank you so much Anthony welcome everyone I'm John the host and what do I host well I host a couple of different shows one called the cult of films the other one called film hooligans which can be found on the they said we said YouTube channel and also on all your favorite podcasting sites like iTunes and Spotify feel free after this video to come and check out my bad takes on films but for now you get it right here uh, that is my take on the hard way 1991 this was a film that I didn't see. This was one that I actually skipped on purpose. Why did I skip this one? And there's two words, one name, two words, James Woods. I'm not the biggest James Woods fan. I think he actively makes every movie that he is attached to worse. Here's a controversial take. Even a gem like Cronenberg Darling Videodrome, I think is probably my least favorite Cronenberg film because James Woods. Not just because he is a horrible individual in real life, because he is. I, I think he's kind of a one-note, one-trick pony kind of, I'm the I'm the a-hole, and, and that's what I do. I think the closest to a James Woods performance that does work is him as Hades in Hercules, and maybe that's just because I don't have to look at a stupid face. Yeah, that's mean, but he's not a nice guy either, and he's not a nice guy in the hard way either. You listen, you egomaniacal little cockroach. I got yanked off a case so you could get your rocks off being a cop groupie, and now what? You want to live in my house? This film, directed by John Badham, who actually had a, a pretty stellar career. I've seen a lot of John Badham films, Little did I know, like, it was all from the same person. So you got, like, Saturday Night Fever, you have War Games, you have Short Circuit, Stakeout, Bird on a Wire. These are all 
for the most part, bangers as far as like 1980s and, and 90s films go. But The Hard Way was his take on the buddy cop genre as you have these two very different type of people from very, you know, different type of worlds. And that's James Woods who plays a beat homicide cop in the worst, most dangerous parts of New York, a very serious guy, a no-nonsense, no BS, hard-nosed cop that just gets it done. And then you juxtapose that America's with darling, America's sweetheart, Michael, oh, the pride of Canada, more so, Michael J. Fox. He plays a parody of Michael J. Fox, cookie-cutter kind of you plug and play him in all of the, the Michael Bay type action roles. No one talks that way to Joe Gunn. Look who's back in town. Where there's fire, there's smoke. Where there's smoke, there's Joe Gunn. But he wants a challenge. And he now wants to study for his next role, who is going to be like a James Woods cop type of role so he wants to go and do ride along with this no nonsense kind of cop you throw these two together and it's like oil and water and you don't even get uh, a response from james woods for the like 15 minutes of their like initial interactions good thing that michael j fox is one of the most charismatic people on earth especially ar around this time you know in the, in the early 90s because he is filling all of the voids of dialogue because it's just literally him saying funny, kind of quippy, annoying things like a little brother, like a little chihuahua biting at the heels of James Wood and James Wood just giving his just uh, Michael J. Fox in a brave way, too, because around this time he was kind of this kind of an actor, right? He could he could do whatever he wanted. He was coming off of Back to the Future, could have picked any role he wanted. And James Woods. This is kind of a parody of James Woods as well, but it's not so much a parody because it's just him. He's just an a-hole through the entire thing. Uh, there's no learning really from him. There's a really underdeveloped, non-fleshed out relationship between James Woods and, and this like single mom. And he's trying to get her, but he's horribly awkward because he's just the job. Like his whole life just revolves around being a cop. You're not going to learn what it means to be a cop by eating hot dogs and picking your teeth and asking stupid questions. We live this job. It's something we are. That's something we do. Michael J. Fox being a, a charming actor that could have any woman he wants at the, at the snap of his fingers. He's kind of trying to give advice. And rightfully so, because he knows what women want because he has access to all the opportunities. For a generic cookie cutter, like, I'm going to learn from you, you're going to learn from me. Those people have to be open. And James Woods is never open to learn anything from Michael J. Fox's character. He's just miserable during the entire thing where his girlfriend winds up like, I don't want to be with anybody anymore. <laughs> she like, <laughs> he turns her off to everybody. So for the time, I think this film was probably novel because you get to see Marty McFly dropping F-bombs, getting bloody and stuff like that. So I think that was kind of the allure, uh, or at least that's what the, the director was going for, was seeing Michael J. Fox in this kind of a role. He was America's little brother. He was, you know, Family Ties, Back to the Future, and Teen Wolf. So he was all over these family roles. So it was nice to see him able to let his hair down a little bit. And I think any success that this film has, in my opinion, is because of him. Just replacing James Woods, anyone with a little bit of charisma, I think that would have elevated this non-original take on the buddy cop genre because I think the script is written okay. It's paced really well. I wasn't really bored watching this because there's always something for them to do. Even the, the fun downtime of them going to get this like horrible hot dog called a frog dog just drowning it in condiments and this place was above any health inspector's reproach i was getting a gallbladder attack just watching him like inhale this hot dog just full of ketchup and mustard so there was some things that were okay just because michael j fox is that charismatic that he was able to put a subpar unoriginal film on his back and make it somewhat entertaining to watch you actually had some other supporting roles 
that were a lot of fun. You had uh, Penny Marshall as the manager of Michael J. Fox's character. She doesn't get a ton of screen time, but when she's in there, she's great because Penny Marshall, it's like saying you don't like Penny Marshall is like saying you don't like a warm hug. We also have very small roles from uh, Delroy Lindo, uh, who, who plays a fun police chief. You have LL Cool J for a second, uh, Luis Guzman. The biggest standout performances in this is Stephen Lang as the bad guy. He's called like the party crasher or something. He's just kind of a Batman villain in this very kind of serious cop movie. You to me, no. to you. me to you. To you. Me to you. Me to you. To you. Me to you. This movie is totally schizophrenic, but I think that's to its strong suit because if it was just James Woods being mean to Michael J. Fox, the novelty would wear out a lot sooner than it did, and it already kind of did, in my opinion. But having a weird character like Stephen Lang just be a total creep, and he's just such a great actor, and I'm glad that his career has has gotten legs, you know, even, even today. Like, he just plays really funky, you know, off the cuff kind of like bad guys. So th it's good to see him and it's good to see him in here. And he's just such a weirdo. So he was probably one of my favorite parts just because it just seemed like he was in a different movie altogether. But all in all, uh, I, I want to say thank you uh, to Anthony for asking me to give my two cents in on the movie, the hard way from 1991 directed by John Badham. I apologize, uh, you know, if this is your first introduction to me, maybe you don't go over and check out my stuff because I am uh, being a little bit negative, but uh, the taint that is, the toxicity that is James Woods is just so potent. I couldn't even finish John Carpenter's Vampires because I just think that he is that detractive from a film. If the only thing that you t take away today about me is that I just hate James Woods, so be it. But if you are in for more, come on over to the They Said We Said YouTube channel, check out my shows, uh, The Cult of Films and The Film Hooligan Show, also on all your favorite podcasting sites. Thank you again, Anthony. So glad that we were able to uh, do this finally, and I'll see you next time. A big thanks to John for being here in this video. Loved hearing your thoughts, man. And uh, yeah, I think I definitely enjoyed this film a little bit more than you. But overall, you definitely made some very valid points, especially about James Wood. I'm not too familiar with him outside of movies. Like, I don't really know too much about his personal life or how he is, uh, you know, just with you know, the public at all or with fans. Uh, so I can't really speak to any of that. But uh, yeah, you know, he's definitely somebody who definitely sits in his lane in terms of a certain kind of style, a certain kind of character. And uh, that's going to work for some and not work for others. Overall, though, I do think it fits this movie well. But I do agree with what you said about the fact that Michael J. Fox was definitely, you know, the star of this whole thing. And he was the one that, for the most part, was kind of keeping everything entertaining. You know, there were times where, you know, it's just James Woods just you know, being mean and just being a bit of an ass. And then you have Michael J. Fox keeping it light, keeping it fun, keeping it engaging. And most of the events that unfold in this movie are due to Michael J. Fox actually just, you know, being fun and over the top and consistently getting them into more trouble. Like being told to stay at the cop car while he goes to investigate a very suspicious and dangerous looking building. And Michael J. Fox's character, Nick Lang, thinking this is just the coolest experience and he just wants to be out there amidst all the craziness and, uh, you know, he ends up getting getting them into even deeper danger and trouble simply because of that reason. Overall, I really thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I found it to be a good time. You know, it's a, it's a movie very much of its time. And, you know, I definitely miss that very late 80s, early 90s feel and vibe to films. A lot about the way that the lines were delivered, a lot of the lines of dialogue in and of themselves, uh, the way that the films were shot, the score, everything about films of this era were very specific to its time. Overall, I find this to be, you know, like I said, an entertaining film. Uh, I found it to be a pretty breezy, quick watch. It's not the greatest movie of all time it's a very you know in a lot of ways cookie cutter uh, buddy cop film but I think it definitely you know has its own identity you know with this premise of having not two cops or you know two individuals who at least know law enforcement to any degree but having you know this kind of fish out of water story mixed with the buddy cop vibe I felt really worked I definitely want to talk about some of the other cast members in here because it's kind of funny to like 
look and see that like LL Cool J was in this movie, but then you also have Luis Guzman, you also have Delroy Lindo in here, and there's plenty of other people. And somebody else I definitely want to talk about is Annabella Ciora, I believe is how you pronounce her name, who plays the character of Susan. Uh, earlier, John mentioned that there's like this single mom that uh, John Moss is trying to get with, and it's not really working out, and you know, Nick Lang is kind of pulling her in a little bit more. Yeah, without a doubt, that's definitely uh, an element that's definitely underdeveloped. It's definitely present, and there's an element about that that is definitely, you know, big to the movie, but ultimately it just does feel like a little bit of a tacked on element that doesn't really go anywhere. But yeah, that's going to be my quick thoughts on the movie. A big thanks to uh, John for joining me for this video. Again, you guys can find the link to any of my guests down below in the description box of any of the videos that they appear in. Please go give his channel some love. Let him know I sent you. A big thanks again, John, for joining me here and talking about this movie that ultimately I think doesn't really, you know, have a whole lot of love for it out there. I feel like not very many people have seen it. And up to recently, I was definitely one of those people. So I'm glad to have put you onto the movie, hear your opinions, and uh, I look forward to our next collab. So a big thanks to you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave your thoughts down below. Again, I think this is a really solid movie if you're into buddy cop films. It's very much of its time. If you're a fan of that late 80s, 90s feel and vibe to films, the way they were, they were shot, again, the music, the feel, the vibe, the look, uh, just overall, there was something about that era of filmmaking that can never be captured again and I think that's part of why I enjoy this film so much because I just love movies of that era there's a feel to them that we just don't have in movies these days and Stephen Lang is really great in this movie as the villain and you know Michael J Fox is just a good goofy old time so again a big thanks to you guys for watching leave your comments down below hit that like button comment your thoughts subscribe for more videos and I'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye